Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jimena and today I would like to invite you on this tour around the United States climate. Today we're going to be talking about a state that is home to the car capital of the world. So, Michigan's climate is well defined by its seasons. The Southern Peninsula is where the state keeps its warmth. For example, Detroit, which is located in the Southern Peninsula, ranges in temperatures from 23 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter to 72 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. While Salt Steam Marie, which is located in the northern part of the state, ranges in temperatures from 13 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter to 64 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. The coldest temperature ever recorded in the state was negative 51 degrees Fahrenheit in 1934 in Vanderbilt, while the hottest temperature ever recorded in the state was 112 degrees Fahrenheit, and this happened in Mio in 1936. The Great Lakes are caused for the amount of cloudy days due to what is known as the lake effect. The heavy air moisture also increases the likelihood for heavy thunderstorm activity, which leads to tornado activity, which is prominent in late spring and early summer in the area. One of the most obvious effects of the increasing temperatures is the increase in heat waves. In Michigan, the number of heat waves has almost tripled in recent years compared to the long-term average, resulting in more heat-related deaths and illnesses. Due to the state's proximity to water and its effect on humidity, it is also important to note that the humidity exacerbates a problem. The National Weather Service created an index that shows the likelihood of experiencing heat disorders based on the feels like temperature. Another result from the increasing moisture is the increase in precipitation. The southern areas of the state have increased between 8 and 13 percent, with places like Ann Arbor experiencing a 25 percent increase. The heavier rainfall is also increasing runoff from farms and cities, which in turn increases the amount of pollutants such as nitrates, phosphates, and E. coli in the waterways. The increasing temperatures are also increasing the amount of snow, which may sound like a paradox, but stay with me. Uh, due to the increasing temperatures, the lakes are not able to freeze over and thus they continue to pick up moisture and create more snow. This phenomenon is known as the lake effect snow. Increased temperatures are also causing algae blooms due to the nitrogen and phosphorus runoff from farms as well as from sewer systems. They are also being exacerbated by warmer weather and through human activity. In 2014, Toledo's water system was contaminated with a blue-green algae called cyanobacteria, which contaminated the drinking water with microcystin, which is a toxin that has been known to cause liver and kidney damage. The scare cost the city about $65 million, mostly in lost revenue and tourism. And I'm sure many of you heard about the polar vortex that decreased temperatures significantly earlier this year. And while the polar vortex is always present uh, in the polls, the reason that it was making news was because it actually broke in two and it wandered a little bit more south than normal. This means that it let cool air go further south and at the same time allowed warm air to go further north. This is why many uh, news sources were reporting that temperatures in Antarctica were actually warmer than what we were experiencing. I will actually link down below to a couple of videos that further explain the polar vortex because it is a little bit more complex than I can get into in this video. The first video I'm going to link down below is by somebody who actually did their PhD thesis on the polar vortex. So that's a really good one to check out if you are scientific minded. I mean, he does try to break it down in case you're not, but it is really complex to follow. So I'm gonna, also gonna link down below a video from USA Today that they created to try to explain the polar vortex to the average American. So I will leave that, leave those two links down below. But anyways, let's just move on to what the government has to say about this. So about a week after the polar vortex, uh, Governor Whitmer announced the creation of the first Office of Climate and Energy in Michigan. Despite facing initial roadblocks from the opposing party, as it currently stands, Governor Whitmer has announced two non-emergency executive orders. The first creates the new Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy and incorporates the existing Office of the Great Lakes. Whitmer's executive order allows the new environmental department to create a new scientific advisory board that abolishes the Environmental Rules Committee, which was only there to serve as voice for industries that did not want any more environmental regulations. The second executive order is aimed at protecting Michigan's drinking water by strengthening the PFAS Action Response Team. In a statement, Whitmer said, This is about finding real solutions to clean up our drinking water so every Michigander can bathe their kids and give them a glass of water at the dinner table safely. Additionally, Michigan will be joining the U.S. Climate Alliance, which is a coalition of 19 other states who have committed to fighting climate change since Trump pulled out of the Paris Agreement. 
But uh, Michigan does have the 10th highest emissions in the country. The state actually does have a climate action plan, which was produced by the Michigan Climate Action Council. It provides greenhouse gas inventory and recommended reduction goals. The plan focuses on reducing greenhouse gas emissions in areas like the energy supply sector, the residential, commercial, and industrial sectors. Uh, transportation and land use sectors, as well as agriculture, forestry, and waste management sectors. So let's hope that they do something good and continue to push climate legislation and go green. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that I taught you something new today. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Um, I guess if you didn't enjoy it, then you probably shouldn't have watched it so you should click like just because you finished watching the video also uh the next state that we're going to be talking about is new hampshire if you guys have any cool facts or any topics that you want me to touch on with new hampshire make sure to leave them in the comments down below because i will be adding it to the video if i see it so go ahead and do that and of course you should subscribe so that you can keep learning about all of the states and all of their climates and yeah um i don't know what else to say but don't forget to hug a tree and tell them that you love them show them some appreciation i'll see you guys next time <laughs> bye